Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about a negative that has come out since the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet previews dropped a couple weeks ago, and that is the game's performance. Now, we're not sure what build people are playing, we're not sure how the game is going to look in a month and a half, I understand that. But there are some concerning signs about how the game is going to perform, and I wanted to talk about them for a little bit and discuss the positives and negatives. So with that being said, let's jump right into things. Ever since Pokemon made the jump into 3D with X and Y, there has been an ongoing discussion in the community about the performance of the game, the graphical fidelity of the game, and just overall what the presentation of modern Pokemon is. And in Scarlet and Violet, it feels as if we haven't really had that big of a concern. Now, maybe this is just because we're coming off of the absurdity of Pokemon Sword and Shield. If you were around in the community for the launch and release cycle of Sword and Shield, you will remember just what a cesspool it was. Now, putting aside people's legitimate criticisms and defenses of Sword and Shield for a moment, this is not a discussion about the validity of them. Everyone knows that it was a horror show to just be in the community at the time. There was always an ongoing dialogue and discussion that turned really vitriolic about how these games looked. And if you were someone who didn't necessarily care that much about the performance of the game, how the game looked, you just wanted that that cycle, that gameplay loop of Pokemon, you really it wasn't the safest place if you were on social media. So, now that we have Scarlet and Violet, it feels as if there's a bit of a reprieve. It feels as if maybe there are some people who are just accepting of the modern Pokemon formula and how the games look, or maybe there are just people who legitimately think the games look a lot better. I think the fact that Scarlet and Violet is a fully open world is one of the things that's getting them a lot of leeway from the community, because the criticism of Sword and Shield was that, while it is nice that we have this wild area, it doesn't feel very full, it doesn't feel full of life, it feels very empty, all the trees look exactly the same, etc, etc. We still have classic routes between towns and cities, there's still loading screens between routes and towns and cities, all of that, all of the above, still existed. The DLC was a little less vitriolic. The Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor seemed to be in a step in the right direction for many people in the community, so it didn't get as criticized. It felt like it was more full, it felt like there was more to do, especially in the Crown Tundra. The town was seamless with the overworld. There was a ton of little minigames and legendaries to find, a lot of different clues and treasures and little hidden areas where you could find tons of good Pokemon. It was a well done DLC. So now we come to Scarlet and Violet, a fully open world Pokemon game. And while the graphics aren't a major step up from Sword and Shield, it does feel a lot more full. It feels like there's a lot more to do. It feels like the mechanics are borrowing from Legends Arceus to make a more fully realized open world gameplay experience, even though a lot of those survival RPG aspects from Legends Arceus have kind of been abandoned. So we come to the previews. We come to a lot of media members and Pokemon YouTubers getting their hands on the game for the first time, getting to play it for a couple hours at Nintendo headquarters or Pokemon headquarters, I forget where, in England and here in the United States. And we've learned a couple new things about the games. We've learned a bit about the gameplay loop. We've learned how much of it takes inspiration from Scarlet, from Legends Arceus and from Sword and Shield and how those two mesh. We've got a much better idea of the game, although still having a lot of questions. But one of the things to come out of the these previews is the frame rate. We've seen it in trailers, specifically in the English trailers. The frame rate in a lot of different locations has not been the best especially in cities. Now, a lot of these towns and cities are seamless with the overworld that you're going to be exploring on the back of Coridon and Maridon. Some of them have loading screens. One of the things that some of the reviewers noted is that towns and cities that have the loading screens run perfectly fine. They run much better than the towns and cities that are seamlessly connected with the overworld. Frame rate seems to be a concern, at least in the build that a lot of these previews used. But the waters are a little bit muddied by some of the things we've also seen in the trailers. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile and support me, that is always greatly appreciated. There seems to be multiple builds 
out there of Scarlet and Violet. Let's just, let's lay it out right from the start. In one of the more recent Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailers, we saw a character running around a town with a bunch of Sunflora following him. We also saw the Sunflora in what looked to be a puzzle of sorts for the gym. In that same trailer, in the Japanese version and in the English version, the games ran at different frame rates. The performance was significantly better in the Japanese version than the English version. This is an undebatable fact. This is what we saw. So the question remains, what version of the game did people play in the preview event? And how much further along is the Japanese version as opposed to the English version? And if that's the case, what is the game going to wind up looking like on release day, especially since it is guaranteed that there's going to be a day one patch? This is not just a Pokemon thing for people who want to jump down my throat and say, the game should ship complete. There shouldn't be day one patches, Linky. It doesn't make any sense. That's, that's my impression of you guys. Every single game on the planet gets a day one patch. It's to, whether it's to activate features that didn't need to be activated when it was shipped, like multiplayer functionality, or if it was inserting finished music that got done at the end of development, or if it was just changes that got made right at the last minute. There are deadlines to hit. You can, you can scream into the sun until the sun goes out in 500 million billion years that the game should ship complete and they shouldn't release the game until it's in a, fin in a fully finished state. You can do that until the sun sun goes out. These are corporations that have monetary interests and have deadlines that are cyclical. They're going to hit these deadlines. The game might get a patch. You don't have to lose your mind about a day one patch. So with that being said, there's going to be a day one patch. There's still a month until the game comes out. A little bit less now. There's about 20 days until the game comes out. The game could run eons better when it ships. A lot of these issues that people see in the preview events might not be there. They might not be there. Um, they might not have been there a month ago because they're playing an oral earlier version of the build. If the Japanese version that we saw in the trailers in September is the final version, I'm not as concerned because the game ran a lot better in that trailer. But there are some concerns with the overworld because in a lot of the promotional material that we've gotten recently, it's you're, you're sticking your head in the sand if you don't look at these commercials, especially the more recent live action commercials that have come out, which have synced up actors in the overworld kind of experiencing Pokemon like in a fantasy setting and then actual gameplay. The games look a little rough. The overworld looks very scratchy and patchy. It looks like it, it sputters and it, it loads in things pretty slow. Why are if they have a dev build in Japan that is better? How long ago did they produce a lot of this stuff that we're using this footage? I just don't really get it. They should they they have not put their best for, foot forward when it comes to the marketing campaign for Scarlet and Violet in terms of what they're showing off, at least in my opinion. And while I think that it is less of an issue than some people, because I think they are using an older build and I think we've seen proof that they're using an older build, I, I do think it's worth considering what the state of this game is going to be when it comes out. We're only going to know when we get closer. We're only going to know when we get our hands on the game in a month and we'll have a full review up on the channel and there'll be streams and all that fun stuff. So we'll know and we'll have a pretty good interpretation of how the game performs. But I wanted to bring this concern to your attention. I wanted to give some thoughts on it. I wanted to give my two cents on what might be going on. What do you guys think? What do you think about the performance of Scarlet and Violet up to this point? Is the frame rate concerning to you? Is the pop-in concerning to you? Are the towns and cities and how they mesh with the open world a worrying factor to you from what we've seen in the previews? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this Pokemon Scarlet and Violet discussion video and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so you never miss another one. I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.